How are we doing, guys? Here we go again. Here we go again. We're back with the All East TV and LFC Fan Zone Saturday Night Quiz. We're joined by Jack and Sam this week. How are you doing, guys? Good, thanks. Thanks I'm for having us on. Thank you. Uh, yeah, once again, thanks for having us on. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, guys, make sure you get involved. There's prizes. Well, there's a prize available once again this week. It is a phone case of your choice from these two legends at LEFC Fan Zone. As you can see, the game pin is on screen there. 746-2983. Make sure you get Kahoot downloaded as an app, or you can join us um, following that link just on screen. You can see www.kahoot.it if you haven't what if you haven't got a smartphone, guys. So uh so yeah, we'll probably start. I don't know, probably quarter past twenty past something like that, just to give guys enough time to join in. Um, plenty of guys already on board on this one. Twenty six year already joined. Uh, some some pretty good names on there. We've uh, Hatchet Bamford, uh, Click Mates. Yeah, he is. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got the sixty nine there as well. He's got the sixty nine there as well. Um, <laughs> Um, I mean, there's one I can't. There's one that's just outrageous on there. To be fair. <laughs> on the same, on the same, on the same row. It's on the same row. I mean, I mean, come on. Um, job done's on there. I like that. I like that. To be fair, but um, how are you guys doing anyway? Yeah, Tom, good. Sorry. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Yeah, it's great. It's a great part of the week. This in it. Nice Saturday evening yeah. quiz. Chilled. Yeah. Chilled vibe. Can't get Something any better. Balls on a Saturday, I I suppose. But, one, um, one of my mates actually, it, it was because uh, I was I was going to go on a PS with him earlier, and it was like, oh, I'm watching the because uh, he's a Huddersfield Town fan, and it was like, oh, I'm watching the Huddersfield game, and I thought, Gen I, like, I genuinely forgot that teams actually kick off at three pm on a Saturday. Yeah, you know, it's mad, in the it? Premier League, it's like you, you're kicking off at all these random obscure times. But no, yeah, it's yeah, it's nice. Uh, get, give you something to do on a Saturday evening, don't it? I suppose. Yeah, I mean, um, good to see the amount of people that are joining this week on the quiz already, um, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, anything in the pipeline for LFC fans out at the minute in terms of the podcast? Hmm. <laughs> uh, we had the one that got released today, the first the first section of episode 22, with your favourite, Steve Evans. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, yeah, okay, although, okay. Like, me and Jack were saying, actually, like, although people have their own perception on Steve and what he did for Leeds. He, he couldn't have spoke any higher of Leeds. He was so complimentary the whole way the whole way through, although the first half's only been released, the second half next week. But throughout the whole hour that we spoke to him, he was so complimentary, so kind, so honest as well, which was refreshing and nice to hear, which most of our guests have been, to be fair, but it was, it, it was just completely sort of the opposite of what I expected Steve Evans to be like, because... In the media, you see him in his trademark Steve Evans hairdryer treatment. So he thought he might get a bit anxious or whatever, but he, he was he was so kind, so nice. Yeah, I think like if you haven't watched the first episode already, do give it a watch. It's I think it's thirty four minutes, and for the second episode, personally, I think the second episode is a little bit better than the first one because it goes it, it's like towards the end, he was just reeling off. All these not exclusives, but it was just reeling off all these things about his time at Leeds. I was like, I can't, I can't say anything now, but because uh, obviously you've got to watch the second episode when it comes out on Saturday. But no, it was uh, like Sam mentioned, he was open, honest, and it, it was, it was just a nice person in general. I'm sure we can both agree on that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Oscar, I think you're on mute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making a mess of this tonight. I'm making a complete mess of this. Um, but I mean, obviously, that class, top class way that, um, that Steve's a nice guy and you know, it's made a good podcast. Is there anything you got after Steve coming up at all in terms of you? Yeah, I, I mean, Sam, I'm just waiting for the day you get. Um, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for you to get. I'm waiting for you to get Rajasani or Bielsa, to be honest. I think you, I think you probably have got yeah. the contact book for everything, to be fair. The, we have been trying to find like sort of. Like, not loopholes, but ways round of getting knowledge of inside leads without speaking to any of the players, if you like. Because, like, the pre we've spoke about it before, but the press officer doesn't really want to give us any of the current players to speak to. So, we have got some of the players that are in the first team and the under 20, well, some of the players in the under 23s and the 18s that are willing to speak to us. 
and some of the players that are in the first team that have left on loan, which are also willing to talk to us, which is a way around it as well. But we're also maybe going down the avenue of speaking to some of the first team agents as well, actually, which is a way of, once again, hearing like another unique way about the first team and how Leeds is run by a different perspective, which might be good. We did have one with Helu Rodriguez a few few weeks ago, was it 20? Maybe episode 20? Um, He's Diego... 19, sorry, 19, yeah. He's Diego Lorente's agent. So he was speaking about how he came to Leeds, how he almost joined Stoke a few years ago and then how Monaco were also wanting to buy him before he came to Leeds and then just speaking about time. We thought we might want to hear about a few more agents' tales and players in the first team to give us that sort of insight, which the, the players themselves aren't able to give us because they might not want to speak to us or they're being prevented by the club, which is, which is fair enough, but there's someone else, another angle to look at. Good stuff, good stuff. I mean, obviously, um, guys, keep smashing that like button, keep smashing that like button, um, as always. I'm not going to keep, uh, well, I will keep mentioning it, because, you know, just keep smashing the like button and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe as well. And, um, and to be fair, um, I'm at my man, to be fair, the FC Lewis released this um, last night, the uh, the chase. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, what a video. Just make sure you check that out, guys. Make sure you check it out. It was, it was an absolutely superb bid to do. Um, yeah, That's Mickey Picker, Rockwell Holland, uh, myself and Joe Wayman went up against Andrew Stats Dalton. Did we win? Did we lose? We'll have to wait. You have to watch the video, guys. You'll have to watch the video. But um, but yeah, no, it was good fun. It was good fun filming that. But obviously, um, upcoming games, Crystal Palace on Monday. What are your gen- general feelings on that, to be fair, guys? I'll start with, I'll start with you, Jack. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, Palace... In my opinion, are a different team without Zaha, um, and whether well, I know the London curse is a thing. Obviously, we've got Palace at home, so I think we'll I I, I think we'll do the job because for me, when Leeds, not to say we lost in, not to say we lost heavily, but well, we didn't lose heavily, but Leeds are quite a good team at bouncing back from negative results. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. when there's an opportunity against a weakened team. I think we will take it. And like I say, Rafina this season has been different, different gravy. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I, th- I think, I think, I think, I think we'll do Palace. Um, score prediction for me, I'm going to say 1 0. I think it'll be one of them. I think, I think, I think they'll come defensive as. I, th- I think they'll, like I say, I think without Zaha, that's their main attacking sort of power, so to speak. So I think without Zaha, they'll kind of look to sit back and get us on the break a little bit. But yeah, like I say, it's, it'll it'll be a good game nonetheless. I mean, every Leeds game is a good game to watch, in it whether you're a Leeds fan or a neutral, whichever. But yeah, I think I think I think we'll do, pals. I think we'll get a result. Sam, do you agree? Yeah, definitely. Like exactly what Jack was saying. And I I don't want to jinx it, but I I sometimes refer to Crystal Palace as the Premier League Hull City when they had Jared Bowen, whereas they had one player, Zaha, who was just seemingly miles better than everyone else in the team. Obviously, it's Premier League, so it's a bit different. The players in the team are still top quality. Like, you've got Eze, you've got some of the class players in Palace's side, but Zaha is just obviously that step up. And to see that he won't be playing in that game is obviously a big, big advantage for Leeds. But, yeah, last time... 4-1 when we went to Sellers Park. It was I thought it was a bit unjust, wasn't it? 4-1. It was a bit harsh because yeah. especially the Bamford yeah. offside. It and could the, have been a different game if that... I mean, look at the third goal that exactly. just deflects all, off. All, all of them were a bit there. weird, weren't they? All of them were a bit weird, but yeah, it would be good. It's it's one of them games where you, sh- you look at and you think, yeah, Crystal Palace at home, it should be one of the ones where you should be looking to pick up the points as opposed to Leicester away where you think, nah, a point will be a good, a good uh, return, but then you see his winning that game, which is amazing. But yeah, hopefully a win. Yeah, no, definitely, I definitely agree. I think it's a game we can win. I think as Jack says, it's very rare we put together two or three bad results together. I mean, if you can even class the Everton one as that bad a result, because I thought we played, I thought we played pretty well. To yeah. be fair, on the on the yeah. night, I know first half were a bit yeah. sloppy, but second half I thought had also not been like turned into Juan Juan Luigi Buffon for. For 90 minutes, I think we would have got something to be fair. What, what do you guys make of that Edison game? 
Yeah, if I'll start, I'll start with you, Sam. What do you make of um, Everton? Yeah, like you said, Olsen in goal made, the, especially in the second half, he made that triple save, didn't he? That double one, and then it came out to was it Harrison, and he made that third save off that. But some pointed out, like, them three games, uh, Everton, Newcastle, and Leicester, six points out of nine. And if someone would have said that before them three games, it would have snapped your hand off, wouldn't you? So, although, like you said, it wasn't the best result, especially in that second half. The way we played was just was pleasing, especially well, was a positive to take when we lost the game, which is obviously a good thing. But yeah, it's just one of them things, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's just what we face at this level, isn't it? Obviously, the step up in quality of the goalkeepers and just across across the pitches, isn't it? Really, I mean, there's, there's just a step up in quality, and sometimes you just have a bad ten minutes, which is what I thought we had against Everton, really, in, that, in, the, in the spell where they got the two goals. Just one of those things, isn't it, really? I mean, um, obviously, Jack, I mean, what would you say now, Jack, is the your personal target for Leeds this season in terms of where you think Leeds should be looking to finish now? Well, realistically, now, I'd say as a target for where we're not now, I'd say top half as a target to, to go forward. Aspirational target, you could argue Europe, but that would mean we'd have to. Obviously, we've got a tough. Is, is it April, which is a really, really tough month for us? We've got, yeah, yeah, we've got, got Man United, United Liverpool. City, and Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think them games will basically decide the swing of where we finish. Whether it be, I know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really like to speak about Europe because it it kind of seems a bit. I know it's it, like it's always good to dream, but you know, look. Let's let's say top half. We, I, th- I think I think everybody would snap your hands off if you said top half now. Do you know what I mean? Europe would be a bonus, and for us to get to Europe, I think we just need to have that little bit more consistency. Like if we follow the Leicester game, we went into the Everton game with the momentum we had. I know it was ifs and buts, like Alioski hitting the post, like you mentioned, also making them absolute worldy of a save. Well, saves. Uh, it, like I said, we could have got some out of that game, and I think if we'd have got a draw out of that game, we'd have been walking out thinking, "All right, to come from two 0 down, our heads are still held high." Yeah, of course, absolutely. And um, you know, it, it's the fact that I think when we go one down early on in games, I start to panic a little bit because I know that mm-hmm. we've got to push further forward, and we just get normally get hit on the counter for the second goal. But I know we can see the second goal against Everton, but. You look at that Leicester game, the way we fought back straight away, to be fair, and it's absolutely superb. But the only thing I would say is today, you know, the results have gone forward, haven't they, really? You know, in that sense, in terms of pushing for the top half, you know, Arsenal got beat, Southampton got beat again. You know, it seems, and even West Ham, I think they're getting held at the minute. So, you know, it seems we like... We can overtake Arsenal if we win on Monday, am I yeah, right? Yeah, we win on... They're on, they're on 20, yeah. Yeah, like... Look, either way, like... If like if you said at the start of the season you'd be higher than Arsenal with <laughs> that like twenty was it twenty one twenty two now I can't remember off the top of my head but like if you said be higher than Arsenal at this point of the season you'd just snap your hand off wouldn't you really because yeah of course of course yeah but I don't know like it's I'm um, you, you, like you have no reason to complain in in my opinion like you set your targets right you stay up anything above it is a bonus for your first season, this is my opinion anyway. And then second season with like we go back to the drawing board, all right. Where do we need to strengthen? Strengthen. And then just every season, progressively, get higher and higher and higher. Not to say like we'll be fucking winning the Premier League. Sorry, I can't swear, can I swear? Oh yeah, yeah you can. You yeah, can, mate. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to demonetize the video for you, that's all. Oh mate, it's yeah, fine. fine. No, I meant to say fine. in ten years we'll be winning the Premier League. But you know, like you've just got to every season just slightly set your targets a little higher and then eventually who knows like i said we've got the investment aren't we from the 49ers so where that'll go in the summer i don't know hopefully on harrison anyway there was that <laughs> article one that what was uh, released on twitter about uh harrison saying that he was it was practically a done deal for 10 million in the summer I don't yeah know the agreed it. fee effectively yeah. yeah it's um so that, you know it's all good news isn't it it's all good news um i mean guys we will be starting um, we'll we'll start. We'll just try and get to eighty first, and then we'll probably start two three minutes. So guys, get joining, get joining, guys. That's probably be a left. Don't leave, don't leave. Right, we'll start. We'll start. <laughs> that's a bit of a that's a bit of a downer, isn't it? People just just leaving. Um, right, keep joining, guys. Keep joining. We'll start. 
We'll say we'll start on 18 minutes into this video. So, yeah, we'll start on about 18 minutes. So, about three minutes, guys. Get that game pin. Enter the institute. Get joining, guys. Get joining. 74 if you join. Let's try and push for 80, maybe even 90 before we start the quiz. Come on, guys. Get joining. Get joining. Smash the like as well. Um, yeah, I guess, um, to be fair, a couple of dislikes of the 49ers here, to be fair. That's probably the first time I've seen any kind of like NFL NFL propaganda in this uh, in the chat. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah you can't say that you can't say the 49ers are, are rubbish you know the kind of you know they're hopefully well one day they might even own us entirely you know it's, it's i think that's the way it's kind of heading to be honest yeah. you know it says the investment's going up and up and up and uh the only thing as well yeah the only thing i don't want is like um is if i could the you know like the whole city tigers and that lot no. Not keen on that idea. I don't think that'd ever happen, but um, that's the only thing. I don't know if that's a bad thing, but I always think about that with NFL, thinking, oh, we're going to try and change our names to, like, kind of be, like, double barrels kind of thing. And, ah, oh, it's... Uh, and, yeah, Ellen Road stays as Ellen Road as well. I'm happy, to be fair. I am happy. That's that's my two rules with in terms of, like, potential <laughs> owners. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's... Um, and uh, that's that's right, Sam. That is right, Sam. We love the 49ers, really. We do. We do. <laughs> I don't really watch that much NFL, but we love the 49ers. We do because they, you know, if they get us another Rafinha, then, you know, it's, it's absolutely worth it. But, um, well, yeah, this is another fair point. We've already paid four million for Harrison in loans. It's worth it, though. It's worth it. It's got us, oh, out, of this, yeah. got it, got, it's got us out of the championship. You know, it's got us into pushing for the top half of the Premier League. I'd say it's been worth it. Even if we spent 14 million in Harrison loans, it's probably been worth it overall, to be fair. So, um, yeah, I mean, oh, you can't say. You can't say that, TD5. <laughs> you can't say that. I mean, I, I'm not, I mean, rugby is a far better sport to watch, but, you know, you've got to love NFL now. You've got to love the 49ers. But, guys, we're going to start in about a minute. Get that game pinned down. We're pushing for towards 90 to join the uh, to join the quiz. In fact, no, we're not. Someone else has left. But guys, keep joining. Keep joining. We will start in T-minus 40 seconds. But, uh, but, yeah, I've got to put a couple of... Uh, Different kinds of questions in this uh, this week and try to make it a bit different. Um, LFC fans are giving us some really good questions off Sam. To be fair, at the end of the quiz, so uh, so yeah, we will we will start we'll start in twenty seconds, guys. So keep joining. Keep whoa whoa whoa! Some of these names, some of these names though. I'm I'm kind of hoping some of these names are not going to be towards the top, to be honest. So we don't have to read them out. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, so some of them are okay, but some of them go a bit like, whoa, kind of well over the top. But we are pushing for 90. Can we get to 90 before we start the quiz? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. Um, no, we're not. So we're going to, so, delay, it's delay. But we're not going to. Right, we're going to get on with it anyway. We're going to get on with it. So let's start the quiz. So we're going to do it. Um, I read one, Jack reads one, Sam reads one. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll do it. We'll do it. We lost another one. We lost another one. Right, let's go for it. Who's joined? That's good. And we got to 90. Right, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> we can now start. Um, right. Let's get into this. So quiz number five. First question coming up. I read it out. So question number one. Who played the most games for Leeds out of these four? Red Max Gradle, Blue James Milner, Yellow Danny Pugh, or Green Eddie Lewis. Get your answers in, guys. Get your answers in. The quicker you answer, the more points you get. Who played the most games for Leeds out of those four? Eddie Lewis, what a throwback that is. I mean, there's some, there's some names in this, isn't there? I mean, differing kind of levels of like Leeds player, completely different. Yeah. Like Danny Pugh compared to like James Milner, but I thought I'd make it random. I thought I'd make yeah. it random. It's Eddie It'd Lewis has got a gold medal. Gradle, wasn't it? About about that Bristol game. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Ah, the least popular answer, Eddie Lewis. Yeah, no, it was Eddie Lewis. It was just about Eddie Lewis, um, who played the most games out of those four. Um, Max Gradle, to be fair, only played two years at Leeds. James Milner didn't play that many years at Leeds, and now with Danny Pugh, but Eddie Lewis got two full seasons in at Leeds and played every single game, or practically every single game. And yes, that is the correct answer. So, be interesting to see what this has done to the league table. Let's see. <laughs> okay, so Joe Wood, who I think joined quite late on, to be fair, is top of the table with 818. Robbie Gell's just behind. Mighty Leeds, click one there. I'm sorry, Clark one there. Why did I say click one? Oh, yeah, because <laughs> click next. I'm having an absolute mare here to that guy so far. I'm having an absolute <laughs> mare. 
Um, right, so that is question number one. Question number two, which I think Jack is going to read out. Yep. Question number two. Who won the 2010 Leeds Player of the Year award? Was it red, Jermaine Beckford, blue, Robert Snodgrass, yellow, Patrick Isnobo, or green, Luciano Becchio? A few, a few icons. Of course, the promotion-winning year. The promotion-winning year. Who won? Who was the player of the year during that season, according to uh, the fans? Hmm. I think there could have been any of the four, for being yeah. honest. Yeah. But, I mean, the goal scored. Yeah, I think. I don't think it's the obvious one here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh what what, were you, what would have you guys yeah. said? Yeah, I would have said Kiss but only because we've asked him. And spoke I was to him about, about it. that. You know, once like once he said his number, I was like, wasn't that a question we interviewed him yeah, about? It? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. So I remember thinking Becky was, I mean, Beckford scored. Was it thirty goals that season? And uh, his yeah. still got Player of the Year award ahead of him, which fair play. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, I I voted for Kisnobo just because of the headbands. I, mean, I loved him. I did yeah. absolutely love Kisnobo, but it's the headband that it's me. I mean, he, he did his. He got a cut on his head on his Leeds debut, and then. I think it healed like a week later. We didn't take the headband off, and I, I just massively rated that. Just absolutely massively rated that. I think that's the side of the story went anyway. It is, you know, well, it makes me feel old that, but it was 11 years ago about now. But I do remember, I don't, did, did he mention anything about that headband? Yeah, yeah. He said it was his, de his debut against, he did say, I can't remember, but he got a whack off some, he went up for an head and some, someone elbowed him, and he, uh, and he did. He like put his hand on his head. And he thought, ah, it's bleeding a bit. It'll be fine. But then he was like down, like half unconscious on the floor. And he just heard, heard all the Leeds fans go like, oh, because it went on the big screen. And he thought, oh, bloody hell, it must be bad. Here. And they rushed him down the uh, tunnel, straight into the changing room, got some stitch in his head, straight back out like a true warrior that he is, and just carried on. <laughs> Absolutely, that is just classic Paddy Casnovo. Um, I, I always remember that picture of him at Old Trafford. Just Screaming, just just the pit, just the newspaper the next day, just him just screaming and that lot. Not even at anyone, just screaming in general because he was he, he he did come across a bit mad, but I think I just loved him for that. To be fair, I absolutely loved him. And um, but the table, top of the table now is Robbie Giles. Robbie Giles has took a decent lead, and our man Joe Wayman's up eight places. He must have got that answer in nice and quickly. To be fair to him, so let's move on. Let's move on to the next question, which is Sam is going to read out for us. Question number three. Who did Leeds beat 5 0 in the championship under Thomas Christensen? Was it Bolton, Burton Albion, Preston North End, or Sunderland? What's well, a debut for. Yeah, I was going to say, what a debut he had. That, that's I when he missed, get, he missed. I hope I never aware of that. Well, yeah. He missed, <laughs> he missed the birth of his kid, didn't he? To play that game as well, which I thought were mad. Right, let's see. Let's see. Five seconds. Five seconds. So, yeah, very good, very good, guys. Do you remember that game? Burton five nil. Yeah, yeah. He could have had five that game himself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The soccer. Oh, absolutely unreal. I mean, I remember coming out of the ground that day, and um, so one of the mates who I met up with after the game in Leeds was saying, "Oh, he's an extra Duke, mate. He's an extra Duke." And I was like, and, and to be fair, we were all busted about him. I was like, steady. Steady, you know, it, it was Burton at the end of the day, and then I think that's pretty much it for the Zogger. He had a couple of good games after that, but yeah, that I mean, he was that was that is probably to be fair, I'd probably argue the best debut I think I've ever seen that that game. Was it two yeah. goals and two assists? I think he got it, it was insane. It he hit the bar at least once as well, didn't it? Yeah, he did. Yeah, it was, um, oh, what a game, what a game that was. The high point under Thomas Christensen, and it all went down in after there, but yeah. I thought I put the high point in. The only reason I've asked about Thomas Christensen was because it was three years, I think, yesterday since he was sacked. So I thought I'd throw a question in about the lovely man who was Thomas Christensen. So let's see what that does to the table. It was three years today since Eckenbottom joined. Yeah, it? yeah. yeah. I, I, I wasn't going to mention that though because it is Paul Eckenbottom and I was trying. I try and just completely just erase yeah. that. Well, memory I there. It's. Uh, I, I actually, to be honest, I did actually see that. To be fair, Jack, when I saw it on um, on on Twitter and that, but yeah, that was um, mm. that was yeah, that was uh, that was dark times. He won. I think he won one game in twenty at Barnsley before he got the Leeds job, and, and that was what we used to be as a club. We used to 
I had managers that weren't even good enough for Barnsley. But uh, <laughs> right, we'll move on. We'll move on. The table. Robbie Charles is really, um, in fact, no, Robbie Charles keeps his place at the top of the table. Joe Wood keeps her place in the top five. Roberto is on an answer streak of three. Um, and Johnny L is quite close now to Robbie Giles. So the quicker you answer, guys, the more points you get. So, question number four. Question number four. Right. Who is our second highest scorer so far this season? Is it Red Rodrigo, Blue Rafinha, Yellow Jack Harrison, or Green Matthias Click? Who is our second highest scorer this season? Because we all know it's Patrick Bamford who's the top scorer. Who is the second highest scorer this season so far? The quicker you answer, the more points you get. Just over 10 seconds to go, guys. Get the answers in. Get the answers in. Looks like everyone's put an answer so far. Six of you haven't put an answer yet. Six of you haven't put... Five of you Okay. Three of you now haven't put answers. Right. So, it is Jack Harrison. It is Jack Harrison with five. Um, and yet, the majority has got that one right, guys. That is, that is very good to see. Right. So, the table. The table is now... Robbie Giles keeps their place at the top. Johnny L keeps the place in second. Yeah, it's pretty much the same same top five. Mighty Leeds <laughs> is in the top five as well. But five players have now got an answer streak of three. Absolutely brilliant early on in the quiz. Question number five. Question number five. How many goals has Stuart Dallas scored this season? Is it red, two, three, blue, four, yellow, or five, green? What a player, by the way. What a player. He's... Um, I think he's playing goal. Play yeah, I think mean, goal. goal. I'd rather start Dallas. If Melier got injured again or suspended, I'd just start <laughs> Dallas head next year, to be honest. <laughs> what I'd do is, I've said I'd do a five-a-side thing where you can just have flyers in goal and just put <laughs> Dallas there and just have flyers. You know what I mean? Ooh. 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 But Joe's got, he is on four. He's on four. I couldn't believe it. I, he's on four goals for the season. Unreal. Yeah, um, absolutely unreal. Um, two against Leicester. I'm not sure what the other. Who did we go One against Man United, of course. Uh, oh yeah, that's how you said Leicester. Yeah. Uh, was the other one against? I'm trying to remember the other one against. Was against now. It was. Yeah, um, it was three after all. No, it was definitely four. It was definitely four. You got me nervous now. You got me, yeah, it was definitely four. That Man United one was the most gutting one because that's like possibly one of the best goals Stuart Dallas has scored in his career, and it had right. to come like in that moment. Do you think if that's like a nil nil? Oh, that's probably a moment of the season, isn't it? But never to be, never to be. Right, table. Ooh, change in the table. Change in the table. Roberto is back to the, well, he's top of the table. Joe Woods is back up there as well. And our man Joe Wayman. Joe Wayman is in the top three as well. Big Robbo and Robbie Giles drops to fifth. Ten players are now on the answer streak of three. Absolutely brilliant, guys. Next question. Number six. Who has scored the most goals for Leeds out of these four players? Is it red, the Lord Trezor Candolt, blue, Robbie Blake, yellow, Mirko Antonucci, or green, Enoch Shawomni? All different areas Ooh. as well. I just thought I'd just put areas in there. Different areas, you know, I thought. Um, but I had, had to put Trezor Candle in there because of, the, because of you guys. I miss his backflips. <laughs> what a man. You were a legend, yeah. Trezor Candolt. He went on for ages just talking about anything. <laughs> yeah, literally, literally. No, he did come remember. across really well. Ooh, ooh. Well, the majority hasn't got this one right, but it isn't Robbie Blake by one goal ahead of Mirko Antonucci. It was very close between the two. Robbie Blake gets 20 goals. Mirko Antonucci gets 19. So it is Robbie Blake, the correct answer on this one. Let's see what that does to the table. So, Joe Woods goes to the top. Joe Wood goes to the top again. Robbie Giles back in second. Johnny back in third. Roberto and TD5 make up the top five. So, ooh, eight players have lost their answer streak of three. The quiz question tricks a lot of people there. Right, so, next one. Question number seven. Who scored for Man City in the 1-1 draw with us last year? Red Kevin De Bruyne, blue Sergio Aguero, yellow Ruben Diaz, or green Raheem Sterling? What a game. What a game that was. I know we didn't win, but that's, that, that is honestly one of the best games of football I think I've ever seen. It just shows how we can compete with a team that's the budget they have and the price yeah. of their squad is just absolutely mental. I mean, albeit they were the one on the best of form, but like even to get a draw against Man City is, for, for a newly promoted team is 
well, it's more than good, isn't it, really? No, absolutely, absolutely. Of course, Raheem Sterling did get an early goal in that game. Most of you have got that one right, but yeah, what a game. The best 1-1 I've ever seen, and I will I will genuinely believe that. It was definitely the best 1-1 how you ever can see. So let's see what that does to the table. Okay, Joe Wars keeps their place at the top. Johnny back into second. Robbie Charles third, and then the same five as, as before. Uh, Nickel Christie is up 15 places as well, the highest climber. Right, so question. Question number eight. Who assisted Kimaru's goal in the playoff semi final first leg against Derby in 2019? Was it red, Luke Aylin, blue, Pablo Hernandez, yellow, Jack Harrison, or green, Mateus Click? What a ball it was as well. Oh, it, was. Yeah. it was absolutely brilliant. It was absolutely yeah. brilliant. And uh, and all four players are capable of it. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I, I, what, what? I remember when the goal went in at Pride Park and Jesus Christ, I ended up like three rows down. Oh, I've mate. never, ever it's seen brilliant. anything like it. I'd pro probably say the best thing to compare to it was the Chris Wood goal against Brighton, but that was in a yeah. league of it. I think I still it. think that was best, though, the chemo. I mean, I was, I was right at the top in the away end, like right in the top. And you know where you like go into the concourse and that lot? Yeah. I don't know what it's technically called, but it's like, you know, the top where obviously the stairs gather around the concourse. Someone flew like into that. <laughs> <laughs> are, they, are, they, are they like, like you know, I, 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 I mean, obviously don't think of it straight away. And then coming out of the ground, it's like, the neck? You know, the <laughs> neck? Like, you literally was flying through and that lot. But yeah, he was all right. He was all right. He came, yeah, he came back up and that lot. It's the neck, though. <laughs> You know what I mean? But if it, if it was like, you know, it was, I was just, it was an insane day. It was an insane day. And still, still, I can look back on it now. I think we can all look back on that now with, uh, with good memories because we went up in Derby, Derby, Derby. So uh, let's look at the table now. What a ball off Jack Harrison on that left hand side as well. So the table now Joe Wood, Johnny L, Robbie Giles, the same three as before. And the five, the five stays the same, but TD5. Does climb up to fourth. Rhino is the highest climber in this round. So, next question. Question number nine. What fee did Leeds pay for Ilan Meslier? Was it £4 million, £5 million, £6 million, or £7 million? Whichever one it is, it's still a bargain. Yeah, yeah. An absolute bargain. I mean, considering, I know obviously Kiko Kassir we got for free, but considering his wages, Times by like the three or four seasons is going to be at Leeds. What a bargain! What a bargain! I mean, unreal, unreal. Get your answers in, guys. See, I find it interesting why Lorient let him go on loan at first because, yeah, do you know and what I mean? Sell him for it, a, such a low fee. He wasn't even yeah. their first choice, though, was he? As well, that's the even worse thing. Yeah, just mad, <laughs> mad. Honestly, I mean, he's. I think he's he's twenty one soon. I think he is, but. I mean, even though he's a young keeper, I mean, they must have seen some kind of potential there. But he obviously didn't. And Dick and our man gets to also knew better. He also knew better than he did. Um, so, yeah, what that game, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, unreal, unreal. And five million, of course, is the correct answer on this one. Let's see what that does to the table. Okay, well, it stays the same. That top five, it stays the same. Um, ooh, four players have dropped their answer streak of three on this, on this question. So, Let's go to the next question. The next question is, question number 10. Who did Leeds sign Mateus Click from? Red 20, blue Utrecht, yellow Feyenoord, or green Groningen? Who did Leeds sign Mateus Click from? Quicker you answer, the more points you get. That one point, to win. Sorry, go on. <laughs> that, 1. That, 3 mil. 1.3 mil it was. And that transfer window as well was mental. What There must have been... 10 first team players that came to Leeds that season as well, at least 10. Well, all for about that. the same price, wasn't it? As well, yeah, it, it, was, it was all around that like one, 1.5 million pound mark. Oh, I've tricked people on this one, but just before going to that, I remember like, that I think it was Oxford we played in the pre season, like at home. They like did, and it's the first time I've seen this, like in terms of I always go to the last home game before the season starts. So, the I think you know, we, we only normally do one home pre season game, but I always try and get to it. Um, it's like a, I just I don't know why, but just as tradition, because it's always an awful game. But um, the game was terrible. But I remember the um, about ten minutes before kickoff or fifteen, something like that. They like just did a roll call, like, all the new signings and that lot at once, kind of things. It was that many. 
So it was like uh, further than Anita, yay, Phoenix Rifles, way and that lot. And they just did like an unveiling of all like 15 players at once. It was mad. It was absolutely insane. But uh, I've never seen that before, to be fair, because we signed that many players. There's even players I forgot about, like Wasim Boy and that lot signing that window. And um, pa um, Pavel Savitsky, I think, signing that window as well. It's just, I think it was about 17, I think it was, all permanent deals. And, uh, and to be fair, probably about 14 of them was a complete waste of money, even at that price. But, um, but we got some good ones out of that. We got some good ones out of that. And let's see what it does to the table. I reckon this will change it a bit, this. But Utrecht, Click went to on loan, but he did sign from 20. So, the table now. Well, the 50, the top five has pretty much stayed the same. Dallas 15 up into there. Um, and Joe Woods keeps their place at the top. 10 players have got an answer streak of four. Next question. Question number 11. What year did Leeds sign Luciano Becchio? If you listen to the podcast, you might know the answer to this. Is, it, is, what, is that why you put it in, or is it just... Ah, you know, you know, I did, certainly did, certainly yeah. did. I, I, I planned this, you see, and I knew one of you to be reading this one, so I thought, I'll put Becky in, I'll put Becky in so you can plug the podcast yeah. at the same time. What an interview yeah. that was as well. Um, an opportunity. Yeah, we had a few people come back saying about the... Uh, about leaving uh, Becchio Spanish in, but, like, me and Sam discussed it, and we were like, well... We can't have a podcast with Becchio and not actually hear Becchio speak. Do you just know what like I mean? A, just have like a narrator over the top. Yeah, you, yeah, you, uh, you know what I mean? Ain't the same. So, but yeah, the right answer was 2008. I don't know where Sam's gone. I don't, yeah, I just yeah. noticed Sam had gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm expecting a Sam's contact book, though. It wouldn't surprise me if he gets Be Becchio on the on the, on the stream right now, to be honest. You know, in Sam with his, with his contact book. Um, right, so let's see what it does to the table. Dallas 15's gone up into third place now, making a late charge, well, making an early charge rather. And um, Joe Wood's top still by quite a fair fair distance at the minute. And um, but yeah, it's pretty much staying the same in that top five. Five players on an answer streak of three. Just add Sam back in. How are we doing, Sam? I was saying to, to Jack then, I wouldn't be surprised if you like, brought Becchio into the podcast, then, <laughs> into the stream, with your special contact guest. book. Special guest coming in. No, sorry, internet went. Apologies. No worries, man. No worries at all. Right, so, next question. How old, was, how old was Patrick <laughs> Bamford when he made his Leeds debut? Red 22, blue 23, yellow 24, or green 25? I was thinking, I, I, I had forgotten who, who's question it was then. I thought it's got to be one of Jack or Sam's. And already I've forgotten who, what order we're doing it in. But uh, yeah, no worries, no worries. Quick you answer, the more points you get, guys. Still another 20 of you to put your answers in. How old was our Lord Patrick Bamford when he made his Leeds debut? I tell you what, his first goal was an absolute worldie. I know yeah. not like, in, like length, but in terms of like actual skill to score the goal and like. So to put it in from where like he took the ball is a very very good goal. It was a lovely goal against uh, Bolson, wasn't it? Bolson yeah. making the goal. Yeah. Lovely goal that. But um, oh, majority's got this wrong. He was twenty four when he signed for Leeds back in uh, August two thousand and eighteen or July. It was one or two. Um, yeah. Either way, he was twenty four. So the table is now. Oh, we've got a change. We've got a change. TD five. It's top of the table. Joe Wood seconds Roberto into the top three, and Nick Aliosi into the into the top five as well. Robbie Giles is fifth now. So five players on the last streak of three. Next question. So next question is question number thirteen. Which of these clubs has Simon Grayson never managed? Red Blackburn, Blue Blackpool, Yellow Bradford, or Green Preston? Which of these clubs has Simon Grayson never managed? Get your answers in, guys. The quicker you answer, the more points you get. It's just coming back into management, isn't it? Not going to say which club yeah. it is because it might give it away, but he's just come, just got a new club, hasn't he? One of my friends that. is a, uh, a Bradford fan. Obviously, he was at Bradford for a little bit and he has nothing nice to say about him, which is which doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it is, it is Blackburn Rovers. It is Blackburn Rovers, the only club hasn't managed out of those out of those four. Who's he who's he got the job at then? Fleetwood. He replaced yeah, he replaced Barton. 
Is it Play Buzz? Buzz? Oh, it's good to see. Good to see. I think actually, you know that. To be fair, I mean, to be fair, it sounds bad. This, but since we got into the Premier League, I've just like the football league. I've just completely just after the sixteen years of like League One and Championship, I just tried to just completely forget about it. Yeah, same. <laughs> Even if it's on the telly, I think I'm not watching. Yeah, it's just it. It's it's it just brings back um, post traumatic stress. To be honest, <laughs> just it just you know it's just remembering Felix Weibel's letting the ball bounce over his head against oh, QPR. Yeah. I mean, just, and that's just like one of many things, one of many, many hundreds and thousands of things that went wrong. <laughs> but, uh, but we can laugh at it now. We can. We can. <laughs> I, mean, that, that, I mean, some of the stuff that, oh, I mean, but we can go on to the table now. What is the table after that question? Oh, Joe Wood reclaims their place at the top. Roberto, Nick, Robbie, and Johnny have all moved up and 10 players on the last streak of three. So, next question, Jack. Question number 14. How many goals does Patrick Bamford need to score in the final 16 league games of the 2020-21 season to beat last season's tally? Is it red three, blue four, yellow five, or green six? Impressive so far. <laughs> you can't really, can't really fault him at this point, can you, I suppose? Not at all, not at all. Um, I'm sorry for such a long question as well. I don't know how, to get, how you can ask that any shorter, but it's like... No, it's all right. I would, like, when it came up on screen, I was like, I'm trying to like, go on to... Like a song. Uh, two, one. A lot of people have answered this. <laughs> yep, so it is yeah, green. You got it, you got it. It's, um, yeah, so to get on to 17 yeah, goals, he needs six goals. Um, he's on 11 at the minute, but yeah, 16 last season. 17, you need six goals. Um, the table. Roberto is into the lead now, into the lead. And um, Stuart, Stuart Mycock, 69, is in the top three as well. Um, Jack has joined the top five, and Joe Wood is fifth. So, and it's a combo breaker. Five players have just dropped their answer streak on that question. So, next question, Sam. Number 15, who... Defeated Marcelo Bielsa's Bilbao in the 2012 Europa League final. Was it red, Valencia, blue, Borussia Dortmund, yellow, Sevilla, or green, Atletico Madrid? This is one of your I... Spanish football questions, Oscar. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> you had to be one in there. there. You had to be one. You had to be one. Joe Wayne would be watching this now and probably swearing at that because they put a Spanish football question in again. I could have a guess from the Europa League final reputation but I wouldn't know it no uh, it. no, yeah. no it's, I, thought, I thought I put Severe in there for that reason but it was Atletico Madrid it was Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid early doors who beat them 3-0 in the final so table now oh hey, <laughs> hey. Um, Stuart Mycock 69 is top of the table now he's top of the table Um and yeah, the top five pretty much stays the same. And three players have dropped their answer streak of four. So next question is question number 16. Which of these players didn't start at the final game of last season versus Charlton? Red Ben White, blue Calvin Phillips, yellow Mateus Click, or green Pablo Hernandez? Which of those players didn't start the final game of last season against Charlton? Was injured? Was injured? It was, I was. I was going to say the player was injured, but might I have know been. Might have been injured. Or <laughs> well, they might have been hungover. <laughs> <laughs> or both. Or both. Both. To be fair, both. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. I and mean, you can say we get a few answers as well because he was, of course, hungover pretty much for like four weeks after the. Uh, after it, to be fair, um, and some some very critical people would say he's still hung over now, but um, I think that's harsh. I think that's harsh himself. But but um, right, we'll move on to the table. Jack is at top, and he's even got the fire. He's even got the fire um, logo next to him. I'm not sure what the fire logo means, but he's correct. It's ten correct answers in a row. Absolutely unreal. Absolutely unreal. That I think it's the best bit, best streak we've had so far. I think, guys. I think pretty sure. 10 in a row. I don't think anyone's matched that so far. Um, but yeah, he races into the top of the table. It does, Jack. Very, very impressive. That's not you, Jack, is it? <laughs> no, it is not me. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to win the phone case back. I want to win the phone case back. Um, fair, I'd, I'd have to be very good at multitasking if that was me. 
<laughs> um, right, let's go on to next question, Jack. There we go. Question number 17. Who did Billy Sharp score his first Leeds goal against? Was it red, Middlesbrough, blue, Brentford, yellow, Sheffield, Wednesday, and green, or green, Derby? I remember this goal. I was in the car. Oh. Late goal, wow. wasn't it? Well, yeah, it was very, a very late, late, late goal. goal. A very late Maybe goal. It was well, I think. I think it was. Yeah. I think it was just debut that game. I remember Don Goodman's commentary on that and it was absolutely horrendous. Apparently, he only scored that goal because 30 seconds before, he, he like had a corner or something and shouldered the goalkeeper and apparently that's the only reason why he scored. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> it was a horrendous goalkeeper Don mistake Goodman. though, wasn't it? Yeah, I think yeah, the that's why he it. Yeah. Apparently, the keeper was scared of him. <laughs> was that what he said? That, that's what Don Goodman said. Exactly. Is... Don Goodman classic. Never mind. That's one of the reasons why it's good to be out of the football league, though, isn't it? I mean, yeah, oh God, it's. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but, I mean, but to be fair, I was going to say that, and then of course, Stuart Dallas's Yorkshire born, as we all know. Uh, current <laughs> commentators say so. Uh, the table is now. What's the table now look like? Jack is on the last streak for eleven correct answers in a row. Well, to be fair, guys, we'll know if Jack does get a question wrong. We will now know because we will say. But uh, but yeah, that's on absolute fire, but. Very, very tight though. Eight points is all that's in it. The quicker you answer, the more points you get. Let's not forget. So, next question, Sam. Number 18. Who has completed the most passes for Leeds in the league this season? Is it red, Luke Ayling, blue, Jack Harrison, yellow, Matthias Click, or green, Stuart Dallas? I can't it's imagine as much in this. Yeah. Charlie's not much yeah. in this. It's not, not, not at all. Not all the back, which is like all, last season, wasn't it? Only reason is is um, they not played every game. I think Robin Cock was well on call to be the winner of this, but um, yeah, I picked these four because they play pretty much every game. But yes, it is Lou Gale, and who, as we've always say, has got the most progressive ball carries in the whole of Europe at the minute. So he is the best mm. defender in Europe. That's all we're going to say. Um, but yeah, it is Lou Gale, and he was the top answer on this one. And to be fair, it is. It, I think the other three were quite close, but Luke Ayling has a decent lead on the on. I think do it Dallas. So the table now, he's on an answer streak of twelve now. Absolutely unreal. This absolutely unreal scenes off uh, off Jack there. Johnny is into the top into the top two. Uh, Struick in his third, and let's go on to the next question. Okay, question number nineteen. Which national team does Thomas Christensen currently manage? Red Denmark, Blue Malta, Yellow Panama, or Green South Africa? It's mad, this one, isn't it? It's yeah, so it's random. Yeah, it is. For a while now, aren't it? He's had it for like a year or so. Over a year, am I right in saying? Yeah, I think so, anyway. Yeah, I, yeah. I actually didn't know about this until a couple of months ago, but I believe he's had the job for quite a while. Um, he yeah. did go to St. Gallen, I think it was, for a yeah, bit after Belgium, us. Yeah, they were going um, like. Yeah, they were going to try and help him, help us out and get him on podcast, but then literally he left as soon as they were trying to do it. <laughs> oh, damn it. But, um, but yeah, it is Panama. Who England, of course, beat in the 2018 World Cup. They did beat Panama. So who knows? We might cross paths again. Um, let's see how it does to the table anyway. Oh, I think has Jack got this one wrong? I don't know. He's, he's, lost, the, he's lost the fire um, symbol anyway. Um, I'm going to pretend I know what that means. It means he's on fire in terms of form, but I think you might have got this one wrong, possibly. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I apologize, Jack, if you did get this one right, but who's telling me different, mate? Who's telling me different? Uh, but yeah, top five, pretty much the same. Next question Damos leads climbed up eight, 11 places. So, next question. And by the way, guys, this next question, this question now, we're going to be going on to a general knowledge round in a second. Next question. Question number 20. What year was Brian McDermott appointed Leeds United manager? Was it red 2012, blue 2013, yellow 2014, or green 2015? Hmm. What a lovely I mean, man, by the way. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, no. Humble, yeah. yeah. Obviously, didn't have the. Well, obviously, like I said, he was a nice guy, a really, really nice guy, but it was during not the best times, which yeah. probably, well, well, which had nothing to do with him. Nothing to do with him at all, but yeah, a very likable man. And yeah, so it was blue 2013, majority of which got it right. 
Uh, very good, very good. It was, um, but yeah, but to be fair, pretty much every year in that is was a miserable year for Leeds United <laughs> anyway. Um, so next, uh, we're going to go to the table now. The table is Jack keeps her place at the top. Roberto in second, but quite a bit behind Jack. And um, Bamford is in the top five as well. Um, Calamo is back with an answer streak of three as well. Um, right, next question. So we're going on to the general knowledge now, round now. Sam? T 21. Who is currently top of the championship? Is it red, Brentford, blue, Norwich, yellow, Swansea, or green, Watford? That game, it, 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 it was last <laughs> night, wasn't it? First against second. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was. I, I watched it for a bit and I thought, we used to be in this league. What has it become? Struggle to the, get out of this league, by the way. Struggle uh, to get out of it. Not yeah. like, struggle to finish in the top half at times in that in that league. That was out of low with Sunk. Yeah. Um, so, in fact... Are you sure? <laughs> what has happened here? Oh my word, what's happened here? It, the correct answer is actually Norwich, but <laughs> fear with me. What oh, has happened here? Well, that wasn't that hasn't gone to plan. That hasn't gone to plan at all. Um, but guys, I can only apologise. The correct answer is Norwich. Um, and I did put Norwich as the this is uh this isn't ideal, this isn't ideal at all. Um, but yeah, I, I can only... put Brentford are absolutely buzzing. <laughs> yeah, if you put to be fair on points per game, Brentford are, 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 like, well, are actually top to be fair on points per game, but um, we'll pass it off as that. We'll pass it off as that. Yeah. I can only <laughs> apologize, guys. I can only apologize. This, this is not good. This is not good. Um, right, so yeah, that was uh, that's not ideal. Got at least oh, you didn't change any of their top five. Yeah, yeah at, least not, at least it's not changed it. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Oh, man, I can't believe that's happened. Um, so, it's question number 22. Which of these cities is the biggest by population? Buenos Aires, Moscow, Mumbai, or New York? Love a population question, don't you? I, I do, I do love a population question. I like putting the right answer as well, to be fair, on the, <laughs> on the quiz too, but oh, I've had a shocker there. I've had a shocker there. I can't believe that. At least it didn't change the top five, though. That's the only thing you can yeah. say. Because I bet they all put the right answer, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the, the difference in the phone case. <laughs> oh, it is Mumbai. It is Mumbai. The majority have got this one right, and I can assure you it is Mumbai on this one. So, Jack keeps their place at the top. So, um, yeah, to be fair, I'm, get, I'm getting an absolute stick here. Null and boys <laughs> just sacking. I want a morning pack, sacks in the morning. Um, oh, I'm getting stick here. I'm getting loads of stick. Um, and it's fair enough. Uh, I'd give myself stick. I'd, I'd be doing it. Um, right, next question. Jack. Question number 23. Who are Tottenham playing in the 2021 League Cup final? Is it red, Arsenal, blue, Chelsea, yellow, Liverpool, or green, Manchester City? It took me a second to actually think about that one, but yeah. I'm getting so paranoid <laughs> now that uh, the other questions. Yeah. Triple checking everything. Red <laughs> I'm, 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 now. <laughs> I'm so paranoid now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so paranoid now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Every question's going to be nervy now. I'm thinking, shit, have I, have I, have I got the right answer in here? Um, right, so it is. Manchester City. To be fair, though, the next questions after this will be, will be Sam's fault if the answers are wrong because Sam gave me sent it through to me. So I've got I've got that I've got that off the back anyway. Um, right. So um, let's see what it does to the table. Yeah, it's their place at the top, but it is very tight now. It is very tight. Um, I'm not, I've no idea what that might be, um, but um, Slav <laughs> Salio FC has got an answer streak of three. Um, I should have just tried to play that off. I was thinking, when I saw that, I was thinking, should I try and play this off now? Should I try and play this off? Pretend that it is Brentford and no one's going to try and Google it and that lot. But I thought, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. Um, even, Joe, even Joe Wayman's oh, it's, it's turning now. Even Joe Wayman's turning. So, uh, right. Next question. Oh. Question number 24. 
Which stadium is set to host the final of the Euros later this year? Is it red, the Camp Nou, blue, the San Siro, yellow, Stadio Olimpico, or green, Wembley? Hmm. Euros is weird later this year, isn't it? It's all in different countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. But, yeah. Well, that's still been the case after uh, COVID's finished. Well, it could change, to be fair. It could change. Yeah, it could um, change, wouldn't it? That's a logical thing, anyway. So, before we move on, I am actually going to. I'm, I'm that paranoid now. I'm that stressed now, thinking, "Oh my words! Oh my words!" I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to very, very, very quickly just check. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I'm going to get every single answer. Just going to check. Just going to check. I'll put my mind at rest. I'll put my mind at rest. Yeah, I think it is Wembley. I'm sure it's Wembley. It is. It, to be fair, no, that's okay. I'm um, sure it's Wembley. Right, I think we're sound. I think we're sound. Yeah, we're okay. We're okay. Right, so... Uh, right, so let's look at what does the table is. Wembley, who hosts the final. Jack keeps their place at the top, but it's very tight between Jack and Johnny. Uh, Nick, Roberto and Bamford. I mean, Joe Wayne is having a go at me, but Joe kicked out two people on the first one, if I remember rightly, to be fair, who were top as well, to be fair. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to defend myself a little bit. I'm going to defend the indefensible for myself. Mike Grell is on that three as well. Oh, um, no. Right. Next question. Next question. These are the fan zone. Are these the fan zone questions, these one? Or is there one more? There is one more before we go into the fan zone. There is, I think there is. Yeah, there is. So, which player is the most caps for England out of these four? Red, oh, David Beckham. Blue, Ashley Cole. Yellow, Peter Shilton. Or green, Stephen Gerrard. I thought that was my question for a second, then. <laughs> it's so easy to lose count. You don't it is, to be fair. It is. Let's see. Ooh. Let's see. I'm so relieved number top five said... Said on that, you know, because that would have been a thousand point head start. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, yeah. So, so it is Peter Shilton. It is Peter Shilton with forty-three caps for England. So, next question. Jack keeps their place Ooh. at the top. Building a, well, no, it's still very tight. Still very top of the top there. Uh, Ten players are on the streak of three. Um, so. Next question. And we're going into now the podcast questions. We're going into podcast-specific questions. If you haven't done already, check out LUFC Fan Zone. Check the podcast out, guys, after this, um, because we've got some superb podcasts each and every week. And one this week with Steve Evans, part one. So make sure you check them out, guys. I'll leave it with you now, Jack. Next question. Thank you. Question number 26. When we asked Giuseppe Belusky about the missing match to Charlton with the sick note six, what was his reasoning? Was it red? He was injured. Blue? He didn't want to make the five-hour-long trip to London. Yellow? Protesting against Redfern and his treatment of the other Italian players. Or green? He was told not to by Massimo Cellino. <laughs> I, I love, I love the that. second option so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Might give that away a bit, but yeah. <laughs> no. It was, like I said, we got a lot of stick for this one. Which is, you know, I, I, I think we kind of expected to get a little bit of stick for it. But at the same time, if you appreciate the cause for it, then I think you might understand the reasoning behind it. No, no. I mean, look, you know, I don't. I, don't, I think it's really counterproductive. I, I find it really interesting. You know, I, I'm not going to pretend I do not like Giuseppe Belusky. I think I don't think many of these fans like Giuseppe. I'm sure you guys probably don't like yeah. Giuseppe Belusky for what. Obviously, not in a personal basis, but in terms of what he did at Leeds before he obviously interviewed him and. Yeah, well, I'm not going to, I won't change my opinion on that, but I find it really interesting, to be fair. I did really find that um, revelation interesting. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Obviously, he wasn't happy with his treatment, but, uh, but yeah, I guess I guess it is what it is. But um, but the majority's actually got this one wrong. Um, and to be fair, I would have actually gone more, before, obviously, um, the podcast, I, I'd have gone more with the last one, you know. That was kind of what... The perception was at the time, and I'm sure I've seen Cellino did have, you know, I'm sure this probably did happen from time to time with Cellino in terms of controversial things, but it was it was actually 
yellow, wasn't it? It was actually yellow, um, protesting against Redfern and his treatment of Italian players at Leeds. Um, that was the right one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. he named yeah, okay. Lucy Ward as well when he were doing that. He, he was seemingly against Redfern and Lucy Ward as well. He didn't speak on behalf of the other five. He, mm, he said mm. they were injured, but himself he said that he didn't want to play because he didn't like the way Redfern and Lucy Ward. Was I, always, I always saw him as the ring of as like the ring leader, if you like. Yeah, of the same, yeah, yeah. He, he did seem, yeah, obviously Silvestri sure and that lot. He kind of got involved as well, but um, but yeah, I did always feel like it was um, Belusky was kind of like head of it all to an extent, and probably and probably rightly so took the most stick out the. Because to be fair, the other ones who were involved, they kind of got forgiven almost by the fans. They didn't really get any stick afterwards, really. Like if you think refusing to play for Leeds United kind of thing, it's, uh, you know, it's difficult to come back from that. But there's only really been lots of got the stick. And to be fair, you know, I, I'm not going to lie, when um, when we played that pre-season friendly and I think it was Geisley, I was yeah. there and I was giving Belusky plenty of stick. Um, and, I, and I was absolutely delighted when he lost the plot. There's sort of half time in that lot, but uh, anyway, we'll move on. We'll move on to the next question. <laughs> we'll move on to the next question. Um, uh, what's that? Who's the table? Jack keeps their place at the top. In fact, I, think, I don't think any of the top five's got low on right, to be fair. I've got to say, these last four questions might change the outlook of it. Yeah, it, quite possibly, to be fair. Quite possibly. Yeah. Number 27. Rudolf Austin's Leeds Goal of the Season Award in 2015, but who was the goal scored against? Was it red, Watford, blue, Tottenham, yellow, Sheffield Wednesday, or green, Cardiff City? This was my first season in the South Stand when this goal was scored, and Jesus <sighs> Christ, that <was> absolutely mental. <laughs> when he went in, though, it's like, it's just like the power, the power behind the shot, he's like lobs the keeper. Yeah, I'm going to say one of them shots, as soon as he left his foot, you knew that it was going to go in. <laughs> <sighs> it's just like, it was insane. I'm not getting, like, the keeper's position was a bit questionable, but the way he hit the ball was just like, oh, what a goal. What a goal. But um, yeah, it, all, it was Watford and we lost the game as well. Yeah. The reason I put oh. Tottenham in there as well was because it, we were talking about it. The, if you remember on the full time whistle, can you remember that? He scored from the halfway line. Yes. <laughs> as as yeah, the referee blew that. his whistle. And he was saying now, why he did that, I'll never know. The best goal he'd ever scored, but fair enough, Watford. Very good, very good. I'm um, sure it wasn't Brentford. Are you sure it wasn't <laughs> Brentford? <laughs> um, but yeah, it was Watford. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant, guys. Absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, we were 2 the up, as Jamie says there, and we lost 3-2 because that was Leeds United back then. Um, <laughs> right, so, next question. Oh, change. Change at the top. Johnny, eight points is all that's in it. The phone case could be decided now within the next three questions. Yeah, eight points is all that's in it. So, and Spielz's boys is up 10 places as well. So, next question. Question number 28. David Hockaday was in charge of Leeds for how many matches in all competitions? Red five, blue six, yellow seven, or green eight? I was surprised by this, to be fair, when um, when Sam sent the question across. I was su quite surprised by this. Oh, yeah, I'm getting absolutely out of there, mate. <laughs> Just let it go, mate. Let it go. I don't think people are going to let this go. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, to be fair. I don't. I think I'm fully feeling I won't be on this next week. Um, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was six. It took um, two wins out of those six games, I believe. It was two wins, two wins, four defeats. Uh, one against the mighty Atkins and Stanley, and another one was against Middlesbrough in that really sharp game. But yeah, let's see how it does to the table. Quite an even split of answers here, so I reckon that's going to change the table a bit. No, no, it doesn't. But Bamford is up into the top five, and TD5 is on the streak of six correct answers in a row. Be unbelievable if um, if Jack doesn't win this after the run we went on earlier on in the quiz in terms of the first mm. the first ten questions or so. Um, right, so, next question. Question number 29. Olivier de Corl became Leeds' record signing when he joined the club, but who was Leeds' previous record signing? Was it red, Danny Mills, blue, Darren Huckabee, blue, Michael Dewberry, or green, Michael Bridges? Yeah, I mean, de Corl was a... It was, it, was, it was a bit hard to get hold of, but like I said, it was worth it because like some of the stories he told and... 
you know, just about just like even speaking to somebody from that era is just like in awe. So, you know, like even though it was probably before, well, I know it's before my time and I could say before Sam's time as well. So, a hero just, of mine to call, absolute hero of mine. And it was, of course, Michael Bridges, who was just just before my time, to be fair, Michael Bridges. I'm kind of like the season after when I got into football, but. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely unreal, absolutely unreal. Um, both players for uh, for Leeds United, but it was, of course, Michael Bridges. So let's do see what that does to the table with one question remaining. Does that change anything? Oh, okay, oh. okay. Oh, big lead now for Johnny. Big, big lead. Bamford is in the top three as well. Um, Mikey Grell is on three in a row. So. Final question, and it's to you, Sam. Number 30. When set-piece coach Gianni Vio was at Leeds, how many free kicks did Leeds directly score from? Was it red, zero, blue, one, yellow, two, and green, three? He, this could be it. He, when we um, had him on this show, he's obviously Italian and his English wasn't the best, but he is probably the most knowledgeable person I've ever spoken to about football. Some of the stuff he was coming out, it was just like, never thought about it, it was mental. He was literally saying like the average speed of what a ball's hit, like how far, it, like what height, to what distance it dips at, to what angle, it's literally like stuff you wouldn't even... Times, the reaction like, yeah, times, and the reaction times, and how he bend it, and all sorts, it was a joke. Yeah. That's absolutely brilliant, but um, who who was it against? The um the free kick, you know, Martin right? Burton, Pablo. Oh, of course it was the Pablo Hernandez. Pablo Hernandez. I was trying to think then who was it against, but um, but yeah, I reckon this might have changed the the whole quiz. You know, I reckon this might have changed the whole quiz. This um this last question because this is a difficult difficult one. It's very much a guess, isn't it? Really, but um, let's see what it's done to the fa the final table. So the podium Ooh. is in. Oh, in third place, Robbie Jones. 21. 21 still, wow. 23 out of 30 is Jack. And the top of the table, and this week's winner is Johnny L. Johnny L wins this week. Jack, Jack got more questions right and still came second. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair. But to be fair, Johnny and Jack, I will defend myself here, both got the Norwich and Brentford one right. Um, but it was actually classed as wrong on here. So, yeah, it's, it's still Johnny who wins this. It's still Johnny who wins this. You know, it's um, absolutely, absolutely brilliant from Johnny, to be fair. But he must have answered the questions very, very quickly, is all I can say. But, Johnny, get in touch with um, all, all these TVs. Take a screenshot as well, because, like I say, like, like anybody can message us saying the so-and-so. Yeah, so you know, like screenshot. screenshot this. Screenshot from your, from your phone or device. Winning this, um, win this prize, Johnny L, because we do need evidence. Because some people have been pretending to be the winners um, in the last couple of weeks. Two LFC fan zone and ourselves. So make sure you screenshot this, um, Johnny L. And yeah, um, congratulations, congratulations, and I hope you hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we'll try and ignore my kind of well, I'll try and ignore my mistake. I do apologise for it. Also, the quiz, but I don't think it did. To be fair, I don't think it did. I'll tell myself that at night. It didn't adjust the quiz. Um, but yeah, congratulations to Johnny. You win the phone case personalised of your choice. So um, we will, we will just. Um, what we're going to do next? Stop this screen. And yeah, I guess we're going to uh, we're going to leave it there anyway. Cheers, Thomas Frank. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get I'm going to get that for a while now. I'm going to have to accept that. But, um, but absolutely brilliant, lads. Um, and yeah, just remind us of. Um, if anyone is just joining now, of what you have got coming up on the podcast. So, like you said earlier, today was the release of the Steve Evans first section. So, we chat with our guests for normally about an hour, don't we, Jack? So, then we split it up yeah. into half. So, this the first section is normally the first half an hour, the second, the second half an hour. And uh, the first section was about him joining Leeds and his first games in charge and then the January transfer window, which was quite interesting. And then the second section, which is next week, next Saturday, was more about second half of Leeds and going through sort of a rough patch, both 
through the form and how he left the club, which was which was quite quite bad to be honest. But the way he was saying yeah. it was was it was really like, bad. That was probably the highlight of the episode, in my opinion. Anyway, like yeah, it, like it 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 wasn't just a case of see you later. It was like a, like a lot more to it, and it is it is interesting because like when I was here and I was like, this is bad. Do you know what I mean? It's bad. Yeah. Like on a man to man level, it's bad. But not professional at all, especially by no, 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 Leeds. No. It was a joke. And then you're answering the question, especially the um we have on our episodes, we have four submitted questions. We put it out to our followers to uh submit their questions that they want to have to our guests. And one of them was about asking if you still thought that Leeds should have had an English manager instead of Marcelo Bielsa as head coach, and he said that he he was completely wrong. He would call himself an idiot, so he apologised for that. Said, "Yeah, I was wrong. I didn't." He, 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 I think he said that he wasn't even aware of who he was, or he wasn't as aware of who Bielsa was before. I think, I think his words were along the lines of that. He's heard of him, but he wasn't aware of like what not like not what he stood for, but what is like his 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 tactics were and how much he's actually changed. So like he's heard of the name, but like he wasn't aware of like how influential he was. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. But um, but yeah, no, very, very good podcast. Make sure you check it out, guys. We will be back next week. And for, for the for this foreseeable ourselves and obviously fans own present the quiz to you guys every Saturday night, sometimes Sundays, depending when these are playing. But we will be back next week. Um, and yeah, make sure you check out these two legends. Check out the uh, merchandise. Check them out on Instagram. And yeah, we'll leave it there, I guess. We'll leave it there. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll be back. We will be back tomorrow night at about seven with the big match preview. Um, yeah, and make sure make sure you like the video and subscribe. And we'll leave it there anyway. <laughs> I will. Um, I will now go into hiding until seven o'clock next Sunday. <laughs> as, uh... <laughs>